fifth lesson of unit seven properties of logarithms we're gonna learn some properties we're gonna do some examples this is a fun one real really the last example is is what i'm saying is fun but a lot of it's going to be pretty straightforward so let's go ahead and dive in so here are the properties there they are uh so there is product property where if we have a product in the argument of a logarithm we can split that up into the log of the first one plus the log of the second one this can be a really useful thing it doing this either way now remember that equals goes both ways so we could start with this and turn it into that or we could even start with this and turn it into that, right? That's true for all of these things. We can go, we can go back and forth, mix and match, and all the things. So if we have a quotient in the argument, we can split that up into the log of the numerator minus the log. Oop, that should have an X on it. Let's add that real quick, right? Because the base isn't going to change. Uh, it's going to change magically, right? <coughs> Excuse me. And so this one, this one, of course, the order doesn't technically matter, right? It's it, but this one, the order, of course, does matter because this one, you have to have the numerator first and then the uh, denominator second because that minus is going to change what it is. Now, this last property is the power property of logarithms. If we have the log of something to a power, right? So we've got an exponent in here. We can take and pull that exponent to the front here, right? Which is exceptionally useful. Now, we, I, I threw this in kind of almost as a bonus idea that uh, if we have the base and the argument matching, that equals one. This we kind of saw in the last lesson, sort of, but I don't know what I was just saying, so, but whatever. <laughs> but whatever whatever I was saying so if the if the base and the argument match it equals one which this makes sense because if we have x to the first it would equal itself right so if those two match so those are all of the properties of logarithms that we're going to use let's dive into some examples so this first one is a a really common type of example uh, that you'll see on these with with these things there's variations of this we're going to do two of them uh one now and then one in a, in a minute so we're going to use the fact that log base four of three is approximately equal to 0 0.7925 to approximate the value of this now these it's it's important to note here that these particular problems uh you <coughs> you have to show your work to get full credit for these problems uh, at least in my class anyway, because if you know how on your calculator, you may be able to just punch in the log of 192 with a base of four or whatever. Your calculator may or may not be able to do this. Not all calculators can. This is kind of a a spoiler for the next lesson. And the next lesson is if it says a log without any base, then it's actually base 10. Um, but so if you want to do a different base, that's some calculators can do that. Some calculators can't and whatever else. Um, but we're going to use this approximation and some properties in order to set this up. So if we can turn this into having a three in it, so if we can get this, this as a three, then we can make it equal this. So what is 192 divided by three? Is that something that comes out, out to be a true thing or a, uh, whole number is the word, a true, a true thing. AKA a whole number, whatever in the world I'm trying to say, <laughs> divided by three is in fact a whole number, right? So let's turn this into the log base four of 64 times three. That's useful, right? Because we can split this off and, and make it something we do. So this is the product property, right? So we can turn this into the log base four of 64, whoops, 64 plus the log base four of, <coughs> excuse me, of three, right? That totally works. Now, so this one is gonna, it going to simplify or approximate into this. This is gonna, this is gonna turn into that because this equals that, so that's true. Can we do anything with this? Well, if we could get this into being four to the something, 
then we could pull that something out to the front, right? With the power property, a, and log base four of four would be one. And so we could turn it into the exponent. So can we turn, this is kind of like, oops, this is kind of like what we did with exponential equations a couple lessons ago. So can we turn 64 into four to the something? Well, let's see, four squared is 16, so we gotta go higher, so how about four cubed? Look at that, 64, that's great. So we can turn this into four cubed, right? So we're gonna turn this one into the log base four of four, let me take that off, four cubed plus 0 0.7925, right? So we can substitute this in for this because they're equal. That's our tool that we're using. Now this one, we pull the three to the front and make it three times log base four of four, which is one. So that turns into just a three, right? Because three times one is just three. So three plus 0 0.7925 would be an answer of 3.7925. Easy peasy. All right, next example. We've got a word problem in here. Don't get scared of the words. Just read the words and do the math. You can do this, right? The pH of a substance is defined as the concentration. Yeah, we got chemistry. Concentration of hydrogen ions or H plus in moles. It is given by the formula pH equals the log base 10, which I just kind of previewed for the next, next lesson that we could just write log without the base, but we'll keep this in for this lesson of one over the number of hydrogen ions, right? Find the amount of hydrogen in a liter of acid rain that has a pH of 4.2. All right, so let's write this. this we're, gonna, we're going to put this 4.2 in for the pH, right? Let me use a different color, I think, since we've got a lot of white for the problem. We'll, we'll kind of do, do this in a different color just so it's a little clearer what you're looking at on the screen. So 4.2 equals the log base 10 of 1 over H plus. So we're solving for this H plus. So what could we do? How could we get at that H plus? Well, the first thing we could do is we've got a quotient here, right? And here, so we could split this into two logarithms without this weird fraction, right? We could do that with subtraction, right? So 4.2 equals the log base 10 of one minus the log base 10 of H plus, right? That's, that might be useful and helpful. So what else do we know? Well, this one right here, this guy, we can evaluate real easily as log base 10 of one. I mean, we could put that in our calculator. But we don't have to because it's got a one. And so the log base whatever of one is going to be zero, right? Because 10 to the zero equals one. So anything to the zero equals one. So if we got a one in here in the argument, then this whole thing is going to evaluate out to be zero, right? That's easy peasy. So we got 4.2 plus equals well, instead of saying zero, we'll just say it cancels, right? Equals negative log base 10 of H plus. You may want to note over in the sidebar, if you're going to be like, come back to study this and you're going to be confused, just, just, you may want to note that the log base X makes anything of one equals zero you could even and call that another property if you want it's it's it that's kind of true right so now what do we got well let's see we've got all this stuff that we we can we can do things with we could <coughs> excuse me we we could convert this over to exponential form maybe that might be a good idea or or try to put, come up with something else clever i don't know but before we convert it to exponential form, I want to move this negative over. So I, I want to divide both sides by negative one, just because it's going to be easier to see. And that negative is liable to kind of disappear and poof if we're not careful. So before we do that, I'm going to I'm going to just do negative 4.2 equals the log of H plus. Now, 
how would I know to do that? Well, it, before it, it's generally best practice before converting from logarithmic form to exponential form to completely isolate that logarithm, right? And when and so he still had his negative on him, so we're gonna do, we're just completely isolating him, getting him all by himself, and now we can turn him into exponential form. I'm gonna, I'm gonna run out of space for the half, second half of this problem. Let me move this guy. It's the second half of this problem. What are you talking? Don't worry. Don't stress. It's fine. You're going to be okay. <clears throat> You're going to be all right. All right. So let's convert this into, oh, I left the 10 off, which technically can, <laughs> but I don't want to do that yet. We'll wait till the next lesson. So 10 to the negative 4.2 equals H plus. All right. So 10, let's punch that in our calculator. So 10 to the negative 4.2 equals 6.3 times 10 to the negative 5, right? H plus equals 6.3 times 10 to the negative 5. If we were write this, this in standard form, that would be... Uh, one, two, three, four, five. So one, two, three, four. That's what I was thinking in my head, but I was afraid I was going to make a weird mistake. I don't know why. So 0 0.000063. So really small number, which makes sense, actually. So like I said, second half of this problem, we need to, we need to verify that this actually works. So we're going to do a check. Right, and so we're gonna we're gonna plug this number in for the H plus and see if we get 4.2 right here. So we're, we're gonna practice that with a little bit of more properties of logarithms. So we want to do a check and make sure this works, right? So we're going to plug this back into our original. See if we get 4.2. So we want to see whether 4.2 equals the log base 10 of 1 over 10 to the negative 4.2. All right, so does that equal that? And so we're going we're gonna to check it. And we're partially going to check it because it's a good idea to do and partially because it's going to give us some really good extra practice with our properties of logarithms, right? We can split this. We've got a quotient here into a subtraction, right? So we've got 4.2 equals the log base 10 of 1, which we know what's going to happen with that. It's going to cancel, right? Minus, I'm going to do both. Well, no, I'm not going to do that. That's a bad idea. The log base 10 of 10 to the negative 4.2. Oops, I don't know why I did that. All right, so this one just cancels, right? Easy peasy. He goes, he goes away because of that one. He turns into a zero. So then we can pull this, this X one out to the front and do negative one times negative 4.2 and we end up with 4.2 equals 4.2. So it does in fact work, yay, happiness. Let's move on to the next example. All right, this is just like that other one kind of, but we're gonna use different properties. So given the log base two of five is about 2.3219, approximate the value of this. So we've got, a five here. So we need to turn this into a five. I'm going to rewrite that since it's so small as log base two of 25. So can we turn 25 into five? Well, we can, right? We can turn it into five times five or five squared, right? So turn this into the log base two of five squared, right? So then we got, we've got a that's fine. It can be there. Whatever. We have an argument squared. We can pull that little exponent out to the front and turn this into two times this. I'll go ahead and write that as a, as a full step. Two times the log base two of five. The log base two of five is this right there. So it turns into two times 2.3219, which that we're just going to plop into our calculator. Easy peasy. 
2 times 2.3219, enter. So we get that it is approximately equal, approximately equal to 4.6438. There we go. We've got one more example to do, and then we are through. This right here, are these kind of ones are, are my favorites, and then we're actually going to learn some more that are really cool in the next lesson um, where we, we get to do all kinds of magic stuff. So this, we're trying to solve for x. So we got to get to the x. It's stuck in, this, in these logarithms. So we got to get it out the logarithms. We've got to get it out by himself, right? Got to get everything off of it. So how could we do that? Well, we've got a sum right here, right? We've got law and the bases match. So we could turn these into a product. That's probably a good first step. So we could turn this into the log base 6 of x times. Now, it's times this whole thing, right? Don't, don't make those easy mistakes, right? Equals... Two. Now, what could we do with this? Well, we could distribute it, right? Distribute that x and turn this into the log base 6 of x squared minus 9x. Okay, what could we do now? We need to get this out of here. We need to manipulate some things. Well, what if we turn this into exponential form? Then we'll have these out of the out of the log at least, right? Let's see. So that'd be six to the two equals this. So six squared equals x squared minus nine x. Ooh, we're looking like a quadratic, right? So that's that's what's looking like is going to happen. Six squared is thirty-six. We could subtract this from both sides. I'm just kind of killing two birds with one stone. Six squared is thirty-six, so I'm subtracting thirty-six from both sides, so that'll cancel that, right? So we end up with x squared minus nine x minus thirty-six equals zero so can we factor it let's take a look and see all right so trinomial so two sets of parentheses equals zero x times x gives us x squared right easy peasy so this we could try six times six six plus six is gonna be 12 and six minus six is gonna be zero that ain't gonna work right so what are the other factors of 36? Well, there's 12 and 3. Why don't we try 12 and 3? Then 12 and 3. Can we add or subtract those to get that middle term, that negative 9? Yes, we can. We put a minus here. Negative 12 plus 3 is negative 9. So follow our nose and our mouth great googly moogly right then we would set each one equal to zero and we would end up with x equals positive 12 and negative three we have lots of examples of doing those step by step in other videos you can certainly do that just as a real quick i set x minus 12 equals zero and x plus three equals zero right and solved each one of those right we've done that dozens and dozens of times so We'd be tempted to circle both, but we know from past experience that these might not both work. One of them, we can just already throw out, out easy, easily because up here, what that's what we're checking for. We need to check in this one and in this one to see if we end up with a negative or a zero, right? So if it's not a positive, if it's not a positive number, then it doesn't work, right? So since this is just x, that's already negative, right? So we know we can't use this one in this particular problem. Now, what about 12? That's going to work in this one. It's going to give us a positive. That's easy peasy. So let's plug it in here and see what happens. So we're going to plug it in over here and x minus, excuse me, 12 minus 9, and is that greater than or equal to 0, right? 12 minus 9 is 3, and 3 is, in fact, greater than or equal to 0, so it does work. So our answer is x equals 12, and that is the last lesson. Thanks for playing along. 
See you in the next one. Bye-bye.